Hello, this is a tutorial of a very old software. We can call it software ar archaeology. The software is this uh, link here, BWR, which stands for Boiling Water Reactor Simulator. And I'm running this in a Fujitsu Siemens laptop computer, bought around 2008. This software doesn't run anymore in the new uh, computers. And this has an AMD Turion 64 bits processor and we're running it in Windows Vista basic so let's go to the software we see boiling water reactor nuclear plant simulator this was used for by ACME to train uh, nuclear oper uh, control panel nuclear reactor operators for their ACME reactors the boiling water the boiling water variant not the pressure water so if we enter, we see we have sta getting start guide, control road sequence, and power to flow operation map. We will skip this for the moment. And we see the different options. We have a tutorial, and then we have different initialization conditions. If we go to the tutorial, we see then we have introduction, reactor criticality, reactor heat up, turbine startup, rising core flow. 100% power and transient tra transient accidents. So in this video we will do the reactor criticality. I will not go directly here into the tutorial. I already did the tutorial and I will go back and do by myself what is explained in the reactor criticality part of the tutorial. So we will in initialize the reactor in the source range which is uh, uh, the minimal state of the reactor, it's cold, there is no chain reaction and it's ready to start the source range um, stage. So this is the, pan the control panel of the reactor. We see that the initialization condition is written here, source range. In the left we have uh, RPV, it's a reactor pressure vessel pressure, temperature and level. The level, we also have this graphic here in which this 195 inch we see in blue the water is reaching this level and the yellow is the part not reached by the water then following below we have as SRM this stands for source range monitor which is the first thing we will be looking at and IRM is the intermediate range monitor so this number CPS stands for Count per second, which tells us the activity of the reactor by counting the number of hits of, a, of neutrons in a in a, pro, in, a uh, in a detector. And now it's reading 1.8 ex exponent 3, which is uh, 18,000 counts per second. This is a very low value, and it's uh, probably it's just the normal radioactivity uh, from the nuclear fuel, which is uranium dioxide. So what we need to do is to reach um, uh, reactor criticality which is the moment in which the reactor will sustain a chain react reaction by itself. In this section we have rod control. The rods are rods that are introduced into the reactor. At this moment all the rods are introduced at the maximum position, it means that are all inside the reactor and these rods absorb neutrons, so they stop the chain reaction. Now what we need to do is with these buttons to take out rods step by step until we reach the criticality. So we see now we have the rod 0 to 19 from the group 4 and we know this rod have the minimum position, so the maximum inserted posi position is 6 and the maximum um, out position is 16. So now we will start extracting this rod step by step. If I click uh, one single click, it goes two steps out. And we see the period in the source range monitor giving some values. The period is the time that it takes to increase at 2.73, which is the E number. And if we see the stars, it means infinity, it means it's not increasing at all. If we see, for instance, a period of 50 seconds, it means every 50 seconds it's increasing uh, the activity or the counts per second in a value of E or 
So we'll continue taking out rods. 14, we look at this number. We see the cons per second increasing. It stabilizes, it goes to infinity again. We take out a bit more. And now we are in the maximum position of this rod. We could extract a bit more till 18, but then we will not be able to extract the next rod in the sequence. So now what we re when we reach the maximum out position of this rod, we need to go to the next one. We click rod select. Usually when you pass the examination for nuclear um, reactor operator, you will need to memorize the sequence. But in this case we have a help here. So we click next rod withdraw and it tells us it's the 10 11. So we click the 10 11 and we start withdrawing this. Rot. Always one single click and look at the period until it stabilizes. We extract it a bit more, look again at the period. Because as you know, exponential processes can explode if you don't take care of them. Maybe you are thinking this bar is not increasing very fast, but if the period is too low, at a given moment will start increasing super fast because this is what exponential processes do. So you have to take out the rods very carefully. 14, stabilizes again. 16, maximum position of the rod 10, 11. So we have to go to the next rod. We see the period is stabilizing again. Next rod is 1803. And at the end, we want a period between 30 and 90 seconds, more or less. At, at this period, we'll have um, exponential growth that we can control and we will go to the intermediate range. So I will go a bit faster now. I will just keep this button pressed. But you should not do this in reality or during the examination because it's not the normal process. It is too risky. Okay, so I just increase until 16, the rod 1803, and we see the period. It's not yet critical. It's going to infinity, it seems. Very slowly, but it's going to, to infinity. So we go to the next rod. 3403. And here I will be a bit more careful because we are quite close to criticality. 10. Okay, it increases the period. Let's take it out to 11, 12. It's still, still not critical. Out to 14, 73, 74. It seems we reach criticality. As you see, period is staying still at around 70 seconds. It means if we don't do anything else, this number of counts per second will just keep increasing at this period. So every minute and 13 seconds, we will have uh, this number multiplied by a factor of E or 2.73. Now, because if we just keep it at uh, 70 seconds, it will take hours to reach uh, a significant intermediate range uh, level. We will go a bit further with this bar, with this road. So let's take it to 16 and 40. 40 seconds, it's a much better value. Let's continue looking at this number. Next thing to look at will be the uh, source range monitor detector. This is a sensor which is inside the reactor and it gives us this number, the counts per second that we are using in the source range monitor. Uh, by the way, we just saw appearing the 1% in the intermediate range. So now it means we can switch to control the reactor by the intermediate range monitor. Uh, as I was telling you, this, this detector cannot read above 1 point something exponent 5. So now we are close. We need to take it out from the reactor a little bit, just a bit. To, to keep the sensor inside the range. And we see now that the cons per second are around 300. But we will not use this counter anymore. Now we'll look at the intermediate range monitor. 
Now we are two percent and increasing. Notice that we are still increasing at the same period, 42 seconds. We are just about critical and increasing at steady rate of 40, sec 40 seconds period. Now what we need to do in this intermediate range is to keep this percentage inside the range. So once we surpass um, 4%, we are in range and we cannot let it go above um, 35 percent in this scale, here we have a 32. At 35 we will have a, a rot alarm, it will not allow us to withdraw more rot and at 38 we will have a scram, it will automatically shut down all the reactor and we will lose all the work with it until now. And of course the operator will lose millions of dollars. So now when it will reach a more or less 16, I will increase the range to change the scale, to avoid being out of scale. Now I will click up, we are in range 2, and when we are in range 2, the scale is the one below, from 0 to 125. And here the limits are 108 for the alarm of road withdraw, and 120, just before the 125 here, for a scram shut down. So now I will just take the next rod out just to speed up a bit the process. But otherwise 42 seconds is a perfect period. I don't advise you to go below this in a real operation or in an examination. So I will take this out just one notch. Then and we see this going to 33 seconds and we can go up in the range to 3 and 3 we go again to the scale 0 040 so you are, I guess you realized the odd numbers are the first scale and the even numbers are the second from 0 to 125 so always trying to keep this value between the minimum and the maximum to avoid alarms or or, ma or automatic shutdown of the reactor and I will even take a bit out the next road just to speed up a bit this process range 4 So we are in the 0, 125. I will speed up a bit more the reaction. That you can see now a period of 21 seconds. Range up. And I had a block. You can see in the alarm message display. Control rod withdraw block. SRM upscale. This is because I went up too early and I created an upscale. So this is not uh, too dangerous but I should not have clicked this so early. Okay, we are at the middle of the range. Now let's go to the next level. Up. Control rod with row block clear. So everything is fine now. We are in range 6, there are 10 ranges in total. Ok, next level, up. You may wonder, when will this exponential process end? Because, oh, oh, oh I realized why I, I got this alarm. It was because of, of the other SRM detector, it was too low and I have here two high counts per second, so let's take it out. In normal operation this counter should be totally out from the reactor. And let's take care of this also. Up, we're in range 8, this is still too high, the SRM detector, so it's time to 
just remove the detector from the reactor. Okay. Eighty percent out, and don't forget the intermediate range monitor up. We're almost at the last level, range nine, and let's remove totally from the reactor. Now it's hundred percent out the detector, so this number is not meaningful anymore. It just gives 1 exponent 6 because even if it's out, it's receiving a lot of activity because the reactor now is getting to nice values. So up again, and we're in the last, this is the last uh, range of the intermediate range monitor. So with this, we will finish this mm, tutorial. This is the first part of this uh, nuclear reactor operator. We're still in in exponential growth, but if you realize the period is going, is getting higher and higher. So you can see that this exponential curve is becoming a logistic curve. Why is this happening? Because the pressure vessel temperature is increasing. You see we had 100 at the beginning, we had 107, because we start to have an important power gener being generated by the activity. And this creating bubbles of uh, boiling water so this changes the moderator characteristics of the water in the reactor and this decreases the reaction. So at this moment we reach equilibrium. Actually now we have a decrease of the activity we, as we see with this negative period number here. So we can continue taking out roads. Road 5843. And we can be a bit faster here because now we start we start to have boiling water, so the, the process is uh, somehow self-adjusting. The more heat we produce, the more bubbles, and the more they inhibit the reaction. But this doesn't mean that we can just start um, taking out roads without any control to 16 because we could have a very fast exponential growth here without giving time the water to heat up and we could have a, a, an automatic scram of the reactor or we could have a, actually a, an accident. So you see it's stabilizing and it goes back again. So next road, 50, 51. And I will end the tutorial with this road. Fifteen, sixteen. You see, if we click here now, I just got an IRM upscale scrum, so I screwed everything because I reach 120 in this scale because I was not being careful uh, taking out rods and the period got too low so I could not control it anymore and this just stopped all the reactor and now we need to start from scratch again all the the source range monitor etc. So when you are in this intermediate range don't get confident because of this heating water just keep taking out bars slowly. You can be a bit faster, but don't be too confident and always mm, be careful not to reach this 120 value here. Next part, next video will be the heating, heating of the vessel. And we will see how we manage the power of the reactor until we get the temperature before we go to connecting the turbine. Bye.